In this video, I'll show you how to control the speed and direction of a DC motor using an Arduino and a chip called an H-Bridge. As you can see here, I have two buttons, and I can use the two buttons to control which direction the motor rotates. This is in contrast to our previous video, which talked about how to control a motor using a transistor and an external battery pack, but we could only spin the motor in one direction. Controlling your motor so it can spin in both directions is very useful, for example, for robotics projects where you want your robot to be able to drive in reverse. As usual, let's switch over to the computer so we can look at our circuit in Tinkercad, which is an online Arduino simulator that will let us see the circuit and the code side by side at the same time. However, you can see I have not wired up everything in the circuit yet here because we want to talk a little bit more about the H-Bridge first. So I am using a specific model of the H-Bridge called the L293D. There are other types of H-Bridges, but this is the one we're going to use in this video. The H-Bridge comes in a package called an integrated circuit. So this black rectangle contains a bunch of circuit parts inside it that you can't see and you make external connections to the integrated circuit using these external pins that fit into a breadboard. You can see that the L293D has a whopping 16 pins, eight on each side. So this might seem a little intimidating or confusing the first time you hook one up, but don't worry, that's why we are going to go through it step by step in this video. In order to learn how to hook up an integrated circuit, you need to look at its data sheet to see what the different pins are for. Here I have the datasheet for the L293D. Now, if you've never looked at a datasheet before, again, this can be a little overwhelming. There might be a lot of information you don't understand. Don't worry about that for now. What you want to do is scroll until you find a pinout diagram like this. So this diagram shows you the pins and then has a table describing what each pin does. You can see that on an integrated circuit, the pins are numbered counterclockwise starting from the top left. So we have pin number one up here in the top left corner, down to pin eight on this side. Then we go to pin nine on the bottom here and up to pin 16 on the top. It is also important to note that there is a little notch on one end of the chip and that is the top. So you don't wanna get this flipped 180 degrees or you'll have it upside down and all your pins will be backwards. Now, rather than forcing you to read through this table in the data sheet, I am going to switch back to Tinkercad and explain what each pin does as we connect it. So here, switching back to Tinkercad, I have my H-Bridge in the breadboard. And again, note that I have that notch in the chip pointing up so it's not upside down. I also have it straddling the middle gap of the breadboard so the pins opposite each other are not short-circuited to each other. You don't want to put an integrated circuit entirely on one side of the breadboard like this, because remember, all the holes in a single half row in a breadboard like this are connected, so that would be shorting these two pins together. So in the middle of the breadboard with the notch pointing up. This is a good point to pause and mention that you might be wondering why this thing is called an H-bridge if it doesn't look anything like an H. That is related to the shape of the circuit diagram for what is going on inside the integrated circuit, which we aren't too worried about in this video. But if you draw the diagram, it looks vaguely like an H, thus the name. But again, we don't usually talk about circuit diagrams in these videos, so we're not worried about that. Just know that it's called an H bridge. Now, what we're going to do is go through the pins one at a time to connect them, remembering that our goal is to have bi-directional control of a DC motor, or allow us to spin a motor in both directions. We are going to go in order, starting counterclockwise from the top left with pin one. This is an important point to note that you have different number systems to keep track of here. So the unless you put the H-bridge starting in row one of the breadboard, the pin number on the H-bridge does not necessarily line up with the row number on the breadboard. And even if you do put it in row one of the breadboard, that would only be true for the left-hand side. Remember that the pins count up going from the bottom on the right-hand side. So in general, don't get the H-bridge pins mixed up with the breadboard row numbers. And then later on, you also have to be careful not to get those mixed up with the Arduino pin numbers. Anyway, starting in the top left, we have the enable pin. This is the pin that will allow you to control the speed of the motor. 
We are not going to worry about that for now. We are just going to have the motor run full speed when it's running in either direction. So you can use a jumper wire to connect that to the power bus, which will you, you will eventually connect to five volts from the Arduino. Just permanently wiring that to five volts will always make the motor run at full speed when it's on. Next, we have our first input pin. This is what you are going to connect to one of the Arduino's digital pins to act as an input to the H-bridge to control the motor. That input pin is then linked to an output pin on the H-bridge, but the output pin will draw its power from that external battery pack instead of the Arduino. In our last video about transistors, we talked about how the Arduino's digital pins can only provide a small amount of current, Motors typically require more current than that, which is why you need this external battery pack. So I am going to just pick one of the Arduino's pins. I'm going to go with pin 12. I'm going to connect that to this first input and then change my wire color. I'm gonna pick blue for those control pins. And then I am going to go on to my next pin, which is my first output pin. And I can connect that to either wire from the motor and then if my motor is spinning the opposite direction I want it to based on my code, I can always just swap these wires later. So it doesn't really matter whether you connect the motor's positive or negative wire, I'm going to choose to connect my motor's positive wire to that first output pin. Next up, we have two ground pins and you might wonder why you need more than one ground. These ground pins aren't just electrical, they also act as a heat sink. So they help dissipate heat since motors draw a lot of current. There's a lot of electrical current flowing through this which can cause things to heat up. So you have more than one ground connection. You need to connect all of those to the ground buses on your breadboard. We are actually going to hop across the H bridge for a second because there are two more on the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and connect all four of those to the breadboard's ground buses. Then we're going to keep going to our next pin, which is the other output. So that is going to get connected to the other wire from my motor. And again, it doesn't really matter whether you do the positive or negative wires from the motor here, you could flip those. And then later you can either adjust your code or reverse, reverse these wires to get the motor to spin the other direction. Continuing to go down this side, we then have the second input, which is going to control output number two. So I am going to pick another Arduino pin for that. I only need digital right here. I'm not going to need analog write for these pins. So I'm saving my PWM pins, which are compatible with analog write for other things. So I'm going to go down to pin eight. Next up, we have what Tinkercad is calling power two. If we went back and checked the data sheet, we would see that this is the power for the motors. So I do not want to connect this to what will eventually be five volts from the Arduino. This I'm going to connect to six volts from my external battery pack. So you need to be careful about how you handle your breadboard power buses. You do not want to short circuit five volts from the Arduino to six volts from the battery pack. I am eventually going to use the right hand bus here for the six volts from my battery pack. So I'm going to run a jumper wire for six volts over here to this bus. Again, making sure I do not short circuit that to five volts on this bus. Now we have pins one through eight connected. Continuing to go up the other side, we are actually going to get to ignore a bunch of these pins because for now we are not connecting a second motor. So we don't need to connect the next enable pin or any of these input and output pins because that's what we would use to connect a second motor. We do still want to connect the ground pins on this side. And then finally, we're gonna come all the way up to pin 16, which in Tinkercad is labeled power one. If you check the data sheet, you will see that is the logic level voltage. So that is the one you are going to connect to five volts from your Arduino because that is separate from your external battery pack voltage. So again, I am going to connect the left-hand power bus on my breadboard here to five volts from the Arduino the right hand bus I am connecting to six volts from my battery pack and I want to keep those isolated. So do not connect the two positive power buses with a jumper wire, but you do need your entire circuit to have a common ground. So you do want to connect ground from your Arduino to ground on your battery pack and connect those through the power buses on the breadboard. So I do have a ground wire going through the whole circuit there and bridging the two opposing ground buses. But again, don't do that with the power buses. That can create a short circuit and damage your Arduino or parts on your breadboard. 
Now we are done wiring, but since there are so many connections, it's really important to note that you want to go through and systematically double check everything before you power up your circuit. So before you plug your Arduino in and before you actually plug in that external battery pack or turn the on switch on if your battery pack has a power switch, really double check and make sure everything is connected correctly because you don't want to damage anything in your circuit. Next, we are going to switch over and look at the code. We're actually not gonna bother with any inputs on the circuit yet, so no buttons or switches or anything. We're just going to look at simple code to make the motor alternate between stopping and spinning in different directions. Let's take a read through the code. First, I'm declaring a few constant variables, one for what I'm calling the forward pin and one for the backward pin. But again, which way you define as forward and backward will just depend on what you're building and you can always reverse the motor wires to make it spin the other way or just reverse these two pin numbers in your code. I also have a delay time because I want the motor to spin for a certain amount of time on each setting so we have time to see it. In the setup function, I use the pin mode command to set my two pins as outputs and you can see I actually had a typo there. I wanted this to be backward pin, not forward pin. So I'm setting each pin as an output. And then in my loop function, I'm going to cycle through four different settings. So first I'm going to set both of my pins low, which is going to set both of the motor's wires to zero volts. So the motor should be stopped and not spin. I'm then going to switch to spinning forward by setting the forward pin high and keeping the backward pin low. So this line of code here is actually redundant because I already had the backward pin set low there but I think it's a little easier to visualize what we're doing with both pins for each of the settings. Next, this one tends to confuse people sometimes. We can also stop the motor by setting both pins high at the same time. So you don't just have to set both pins low. If you set both input pins high, then both output pins will also go high and there will be no voltage drop across the motor because both wires are at the same voltage, so no current will flow. So we can also do this to stop the motor and then we are going to switch to spinning backward by setting the forward pin low and the backward pin high. So if I start the simulation, we should see that the motor is initially stopped as indicated by the zero RPM here. Then once I get past two seconds in the simulation time, it starts spinning in one direction as indicated by the negative RPM. It will then stop again for two seconds. You can see the simulation is running a little slow here. That's taking longer than two seconds in real life. It will stop again. And then once we wait another two seconds, it will start spinning in the other direction as indicated by a positive RPM value. Again, the positive and negative directions here are somewhat arbitrary. This would depend on what I have built and which way I want to call forward and backward. But if I wanted to, I could again either reverse these motor wires or reverse these two pins and then Tinkercad would show a positive RPM for what I am calling forward. But again, that doesn't really matter and you can easily reverse it. So here I have just hard coded the motor to loop through different behaviors, but you may want to do what I showed at the beginning of the video and control the motor with different inputs to your circuit like buttons or sensors. So I want you to take this chance to try that programming challenge yourself. See if you can add two buttons to the circuit and use them to control the motor's direction like I showed at the beginning of this video. Pause the video here and give it a shot yourself before you continue. Hopefully you were able to figure that out. If not, you might want to go further back in our Arduino tutorial series and look at the videos we have about buttons. But what I have done here is added two buttons to the circuit with one end of each button wired to ground and the other end wired to one of the Arduino's pins. In my code, I then declare constant variables for the button pins and variables for the state of each button. In the setup function, I declare those pins as inputs with the internal pull-up resistor enabled, which means I do not need a separate external resistor attached to the button. In my loop function, I then use the digital read command to read the state of each button. And then I have two separate if statements to control the two outputs. So one output is controlled by one of each of the buttons. If button one is not pressed, then I'm going to keep that output pin low. If button one is pressed, then I'm going to set the output pin high. And then the same for button two. If button two is not pressed, I'll keep the output low. If button two is pressed, I'll keep the output high. What this does is it will only spin the motor if one of the buttons is pressed at a time. 
because if I press both buttons at once, that is going to set both pins high. And again, in that case, the motor will not spin. So I'm going to start the simulation here and we'll see that when neither button is pressed, my motor is not spinning. When I hold this button down, the motor spins one way. And when I hold this button down, the motor spins the other way as indicated by the negative RPM. You can only click one button at a time in Tinkercad. So unlike real life where you could use two fingers to push two different buttons at once, I can't demonstrate that here. But if I pushed both buttons at the same time, the motor would not spin. Next up, I mentioned much earlier in the video that you can use the enable pin to control the motor's speed. So here we just have the motor running full speed when I hold either button down. But just like we showed in our previous video for controlling motor speed with a transistor, you can use the analog write function to change the motor's speed. So again, I'm going to set that as another challenge for you before I show you how to do it. See if you can add a potentiometer to this circuit, use the analog read function to read the analog output from that potentiometer, and then use the analog write function to control the motor's speed in addition to controlling its direction with these buttons. Pause the video here and give that a shot. Here is how you could do that. I have added a potentiometer to the circuit, which again we cover earlier in our Arduino tutorial series. The potentiometer has three pins. I have the outer two pins connected to five volts from the Arduino and ground, and the middle pin connected to one of the analog inputs on the Arduino. I have also changed the circuit so my enable pin is no longer hardwired to five volts, but it is now connected to one of the Arduino's PWM pins, which have the squiggly line next to them, indicating that I can use them with the analog write function. In my code, I have added some variables. So I have pins for my potentiometer pin and my speed control pin. I also have a variable for the potentiometer reading and the motor speed. In my loop function, I now have an analog read command to read that potentiometer value, which is going to return a number between 0 and 1023. Analog write needs a number between 0 and 255, so I use the Arduino map function to convert my pot value to a 0 to 255 speed variable. And then I use analog write to write the speed value to that pin. Note that if both of the input pins are off, then the motor won't spin even if I'm writing some non-zero speed value to it, so this is okay to do. If I run the simulation, I will then see that again, the motor is off when one of the buttons is not held down, and if I hold the button down, it will spin at a speed that is set by the potentiometer. So you can see right now, I'm getting a little over 70 RPM. If I crank this all the way up, then I'm getting a much higher RPM in the hundreds, and if I turn the potentiometer, potenti uh, potentiometer all the way down to zero, then the motor still doesn't spin at all, even when I hold the button down, because the speed is set to zero. So again, I can use the potentiometer to set the speed, and then the buttons to set the direction. I will get the same speed, just in a different direction, depending on which button I press. So there you go. You now have full bi-directional and speed control of a DC motor using an Arduino with an H-bridge. This is very convenient for a variety of projects, especially robotics projects, where you want a second motor. So remember, all of this was just for one motor, but if you have something like a robot with two wheels and you need to control the two motors independently for steering, then you would use the second side of the H-bridge here in the same manner that we use the first side to connect this single motor. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but we have many robotics projects on our site that use an H-bridge to control a two-wheeled vehicle. So you can check out the links at the end of this video and in the video description to see some of those projects. For over a thousand other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org